Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's weekly market outlook webinar for the week December the 6th until December the 10th. I am Harla Mospissuros, head of research here at JFD, and I will describe the most important economic releases and events on the financial agenda for the week ahead. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation. Should not, should not be considered as such and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, we have two major central banks deciding on monetary policy this week, and those are the RBA and the Bank of Canada. We expect the RBA to maintain its cautious stance and push back against the interest rate hike expectations for next year. On the other hand, we believe that the Bank of Canada will maintain an upbeat view and perhaps allow bets over a rate hike in coming months to stay elevated. In the US, we have the CPIs for November, where further acceleration could add credence to to Fed uh, Chair Powell's view that tapering should end uh, sooner than uh, previously estimated. Uh, Now let's take things uh, from the beginning and uh, analyze those events in more detail. Okay, Monday appears to be a relatively light day. Uh, with the only release worth mentioning being the UK construction PMI for November, which is expected to have declined to 52 from 54.6. Now, on Tuesday, tomorrow, during the Asian session, the RBA decides on monetary policy. At their latest gathering, officials of this bank maintained their uh, core policies, rates, and quantitative easing unchanged, but decided to discontinue the 10 basis points April 2024 yield target. They also abandoned uh, the forward ca- the forward guidance that interest rates are most likely to stay unchanged at least until 2024 and suggested that, the- that this could happen in 2023. Now, since then, market participants uh, remained convinced that policymakers could change their mind and perhaps deliver as many as three hikes during the course of the next year, despite Governor Lowe making it clear that data and forecasts did did not warrant an increase in 2022. Now, data after the meeting showed that the unemployment rate jumped to 5.2% from uh, 4.6% in October, uh, while uh, the economy, uh, with, uh, excuse me, with the economy seeing um, another month of uh, lost jobs. Economic activity, although at a, uh, although at a slower uh, than expected pace, contracted in the second quarter. Now, all this uh, combined with a slowing headline inflation in the third quarter and underlying metrics near the lower end of the RBA's uh, 2 to 3% uh, target range suggests that officials are unlikely to appear more hoggish uh, this time around. Having also in mind the slowdown in China, w- we would expect them uh, to reiterate the view that no, no hikes are on the schedule for next year, something that could eventually convince some market participants that this may indeed be the case. Therefore, expectations on that, on that front could get uh, pushed uh, back, which could result in further selling in the already wounded sol, in the, excuse me, in the already wounded Aussie. The risk clean currency has been mostly driven by developments surrounding the broader market sentiment, and as long as investors remain concerned over the new coronavirus variant and what economic implications new restrictive measures uh, around the globe could have, we see the case for the latest downtrend to continue uh, for a while more. A cautious RBA could just add extra fuel. Now on Wednesday, the central bank torch will be passed to the Bank of Canada. At its latest meeting, this bank unexpectedly ended its quantitative easing program, maintaining an optimistic stance. Data since then showed that Canada's labor market continued to improve in October and performed even better in November with the economy adding much more jobs than the forecast uh, suggested, and the unemployment rate sliding to 6% from 6.7%. Both the headline and core CPIs for October accelerated further above the upper end of the Bank of Canada's target range of 1% to 3%, 
while GDP data revealed that the economy rebounded by much more than anticipated in the third quarter. All these data suggests uh, that, uh, that the Bank of Canada could maintain an upbeat stance, allowing expectations that the hike could be looming in upcoming months to stay elevated. However, it remains to be seen whether the new coronavirus variant would affect policymakers' stance. We believe that it is too early for them to switch to a more cautious stance. They may prefer to wait for upcoming economic data before uh, they arrive to safer conclusions about the impact of the coronavirus and its new mutation. Now, for now, we expect them to stay optimistic, something that could support the Looney at the time of the release. That said, with, it, with uh, the broader sentiment staying subdued lately uh, and oil prices turning down, the risk in currency could stay in in, uh, in downtrend um, in, a, in in downtrend mode as well, as well as uh, we saw with the Aussie. For now, we will treat any Bank of Canada related rebound as a collective bounce. So, in other words, we expect uh, both the Aussie and the and the loon in due to their risk linked status to stay in downtrend modes. We just believe that the reaction to the RBA and Bank of Canada meet meetings will be different. We believe that the RBA will add extra fuel to the Aussie's downtrend, while uh, the Bank of Canada may result in a corrective rebound in, in the loony, which could come under a new selling interest after, uh, in the aftermath of the gathering if sentiment stays subdued due to concerns surrounding COVID. Now on Thursday, the only noteworthy data set besides the U.S. initial jobless claims, which we get every week, is China's CPI and PPI for November. The CPI is expected to have risen to 2.5% year-over-year from 1.5%, while the PPI uh, while the, while the PPI one is forecast to have slid to 12.6% from 13.5%. Now, finally, on uh, Friday... During the early European session, the UK releases its monthly GDP for October alongside the industrial and manufacturing production rates for the same month. There is no forecast for the monthly GDP rate, but the year-over-year -year rate is anticipated to have jumped to 22.2% from 6.6%. Industrial production is anticipated to have rebounded 0.2% month-over-month after sliding 0.4%. While the manufacturing production rate is forecast to have held steady at 0.1% month over month. Now, lately, due to fresh coronavirus related worries, bets around in December hike by the Bank of England have uh, declined, with uh, most market participants now believing that officials may prefer to wait and act after the turn of the year. So, this combined with the pound's uh, strengthening correlation with the risk sentiment have brought. Uh, the currency under uh, selling interest. So with that in mind, it remains to be seen whether upbeat data on Friday will be enough to revive some speculation over a December hike by the Bank of England and perhaps provide some support uh, to the British pound. Now, later in the day, the spotlight is likely to turn to the US CPIs for November. The headline CPI is forecast to have accelerated further to 6.7% year-over-year from 6.2% while the core rate is expected to have increased to 4.9% year-over-year from 4.6%. Now, last week, Fed Chair Jerome Powell appeared hoggish before the U.S. Congress, surprising those expecting, expecting him to adopt a more cautious stance due to the new coronavirus variant and the restrictive measures adopted around the globe. In contrast, the Fed chief said that the transitory wording with regards to inflation may have to be dropped out of the Fed's monetary policy statement and that quantitative easing tapering should end sooner than previously estimated. Now, despite non-farm payrolls uh, missing expectations on Friday, the unemployment rate declined even more to 4.2% from 4.6% uh, and combined with further acceleration in the CPIs, um, this could... Um, this could add more credence to Powell's view. So faster tapering could also mean faster rate hikes as well, and thereby a stronger dollar. However, how the equity market will uh, react is not crystal uh, clear. On the one hand, more investors may reduce their risk on expectations that higher rates sooner 
could hurt companies' profitability. While on the other hand, they could uh, investors could uh, buy more stocks, as a strong report could, unders uh, could underscore the strong performance of the U.S. economy. Now, even if the second proves to be true, as investors may have digested some of the idea of higher rates sooner, we will still not call for a, lo for a long-lasting recovery. We will treat this as a corrective bounce. We stick to our guns that the uncertainty surrounding the Omicron uh, variant could keep uh, market participants reluctant to add risk to their, to their portfolios for a while more, perhaps until the World Health Organization Gives uh, an official uh, gives official and justified answers with regards uh, to the new uh, COVID uh, COVID variant. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. I hope you have a great week, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next Monday. If you are interested in more detailed and frequent analysis, you can find me on our YouTube channel from Tuesday to Friday at around 9 a.m., 9 o'clock a.m. GMT. So goodbye, have a great day, and a greater week.